Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. Cause we need a move. you do, God. Come and do what you do, God. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring when you walk into the room every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you let's sing that again to bed. 
He's worthy today. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. In spite of our circumstances, you're worthy today. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Sing that one more time. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, thank you for this day. I thank you for who you are and what you've done for us. Lord, we just thank you for this amazing day and continued blessings on this church. Lord, just thank you for who you are. Lord, we just give you thanks and praise. In your name, amen. Well, good morning, and it's uh, great to be here. It's great to be outside again, and uh, thank you 
to Mandy and this awesome worship team. And uh, Rob is running and Hunter running sound. Uh, if you're uh, watching online, uh, our cameras didn't want to work this morning. So uh, if you are not here, you don't get to see. But you can hear, so you should be here. Um, and it is a great day to be outside. Um, Pastor Jeff and Bethany and their family are gone uh, for the week. I don't know where they are, uh, but I'm sure there's sand and water involved. And uh, so it's great that they are on vacation. And uh, continue to pray for them, that God would fill them and bless them while they're gone this next week and lift them up in prayer. And, um, and they're a great, a great asset to this church and this community. So I want to say thank you real quick for them. Also, real quick, some announcements. Um, next Sunday, Jul June 7th, we will be inside Sunday morning. Amen? Yes. It's going to be great, but... But there are some restrictions. There's uh, six-foot distancing in the seats. Uh, if, we have if you have kids or, or families, we have it all set up in the activity center. So we want you to enter into the, the gym doors. And, uh, but it all be the same. You'll get video feed and audio. It's going to be a great time. We'll have worship in both places. But just be aware of the social distancing aspect inside the building. Uh, we want to respect that. We'll come out with more announcements this next week, uh, how to follow those uh, restrictions and guidelines. And, and uh, it's going to be a great time. I'm excited to be back inside. Uh, I love being outside, but there is something about not having to set up everything and, and things working properly every Sunday. It's an awesome thing. Um, it's going to be great. So we're looking forward to that uh, next Sunday morning. And then Sunday night, we're going to still do the drive-in services. Because we want to have those people that maybe don't feel comfortable going inside just yet to be able to come to service on Sunday night. It's going to be at 7 p.m. on Sunday night. Um, so 7 p.m. is pushed back an hour uh, to be a nicer weather and uh, not so hot. Uh, but it's going to be Sunday nights in the parking lot um, on, uh, for our Sunday night service. It's going to be a great time. Also, if you are giving online the Assembly EVV app, uh, or you can do our website, theassemblyevv.com, and you can give online. And just want to say again, thank you for our family, church family being faithful and giving and tithes and offerings. And um, man, you guys have been uh, a blessing to us and uh, to this church and being able to do ministry. So it's an, it's an honor uh, to do that with you guys. So, um, so real quick, I'm going to pray. And uh, just lost my notes. Uh, I'm going to pray that God would be with this service. Lord, just thank you for this opportunity to, to bring your word here this morning. Lord, just uh, use me to, to say the words that you want to say. We're not my words, but your words. Lord, pray that you would just bless this time together with this church family. Lord, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. So the title of my message this morning is, Where Have You Been and Where Are You Going? And uh, we talk about the past few months. You know, physically, we haven't been able to go a whole lot of places. You know, been able to go a little bit here, a little bit there, but, you know, traveling has been restricted, and you're not going any place, and you're not hanging out with friends or family as much as we used to. You know, people have had to reschedule vacations and all these things. We're not able to go a whole lot of places, but I can tell you as a church, man, God is moving in a powerful, powerful way. And we might not be able to go physically, but spiritually, man, God is doing something amazing in this community, in our church, in our lives. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. Uh, that's what I want to talk about this morning. And, it, and it is, as a pastor, as a youth pastor specifically, it's one of the hardest times I've ever faced doing any kind of ministry. Not being able to meet together with students. And you know, students are very relational. We want to hang out. And we want to hang out all the time. Two, three times a week, they're hanging out in the activity center. But now we can't do any of that. For the past, you know, however many days this has gone on. And doing ministry is super tough doing a video calls all the time, and it's been good, but it's not the same. It's not the same aspect. You don't have that relationship. But I can tell you that God is still moving in a powerful way, even though it's different. And it's tough uh, still knowing that, you know, we're watching sometimes where we're always busy, and sometimes when we get inside, we take, that, we take it for granted. We're like, the last couple months, we always, like, man, we want to be back inside. We want to be back inside for church. But then when we get back inside for church, we're like, man, I got to go camping. I got to go fishing. I got to go to, you know, I got to go to the beach somewhere. Uh, church can wait. I know church is there. We kind of take it, we take it for granted a little bit. We take all those things, man, I'm too tired. I can't go to church today. You know, I, I got to get back inside. I got to get back inside. 
And we come to those things, and, and I think it's really cool. We've had people come out to our drive-in services that normally we don't even get to see on Sunday mornings or haven't been super regular, but they're regular right now. Man, God is changing the way we do things, changing the way ministry happens. And that's where the transformation comes, and we've seen that in our church family. And when seeing people go check on other people and, and going to do ministry differently, we have families that are taking food to other people that are in need or going to check on people and praying for those people that maybe aren't getting out as much. But having that opportunity, man, as a church body, we have to step up. We had to change the way we do things. We had to move outside to accommodate having people at church, right? We had to go online. We had to do stuff, reach different things, reach different people. We've had uh, 10 or so different people doing online ministry, you know, sending in videos and doing things differently. We had to transform the way we were working as a church. And that's what we're going to look at. We're looking at how Jesus transformed the church back in Acts. You know, this is Pentecost Sunday. And the Holy Spirit transformed the entire way we look at church. He transformed the entire approach to what ministry looked like. And that's what I think, man, God has done something amazing here in this church. Amazing with, the, our, stu- with our students, with our, with our leaders, with our, 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 our people that are community, our, our church family. Man, we're not doing church the same way. And I don't think we need to go back to the way we used to do church. Man, we have to transform the way, man, things are changing. We got to move with what we're changing out. And that's how the early church started. It's amazing to see, you know, how history repeats itself in Acts chapter, chapter 2, verses 42. This is one of my favorite verses. And all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, and to sharing in meals and into prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miracles and signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared with money with those in need. They worshiped together in the temple each day, and they met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. And that sounds like church was happening outside of the building, outside of the meeting in the temple. Man, they were meeting together wherever they could and in every way they could. It wasn't, man, we can only do church at the temple. Man, they were meeting together, sharing food. Man, this is one of the most generous churches I've ever been at. Man, when somebody's in need, man, somebody's there to step up and be like, man, God told me to do this. Man, I commend the way we do things, and I don't want those things to go back to the way they they were. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. It was transformation on how people reached out to others and shared the gospel. When the Holy Spirit came on them, there was a transformation on the way they did things. We're going to jump back into reading Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. This was, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a a roaring of mighty windstorm. And it filled the house they were sitting. They weren't in a church. They weren't in a building. They were in a house together. I think that's awesome. And they looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each one of them. And everyone that presented was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in their own language as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. And you look back at some of the disciples and where they came from, right? You look at some of them and they were kind of timid. You look at Peter and uh, you know where he came from. He had just denied Christ three times to a little girl. You think about that. This grown man, this little girl is like, don't you know Jesus? Oh, no, I don't, I don't know Jesus. Three times, this grown man. He's a disciple, walked and talked face to face with Jesus, saw miracles, but yet still was timid and afraid. But transformation happened. Transformation by the power of the Holy Spirit is awesome. First Tim, or Second Timothy 2 says, for God did not give us the spirit of timidity, but the spirit of power. Man, the Holy Spirit is a power when if we use it correctly, God can do amazing things. Peter went from denying Christ three times to preaching at the day of Pentecost. He was once a fierce, a fearful and you know, denying Jesus. But with the power of the Holy Spirit working in his life, Peter became the bold, the point of preaching Jesus' name to thousands of people. You think about that where most people don't like speaking in front of other people, right? Like, I'm not speaking in front of thousands of people. But he went from speaking, denying in front of one person to speaking in front of thousands of people. 
Acts chapter 2, verses 36 through 41. This is the, the, how God used Peter. So let everyone know in Israel, known for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom he was crucified, whom you crucified, to be the Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and his promise is to you and to your children and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord of God. Then Peter continued to preach for a long time, strongly urging the listeners, Save yourselves from the crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter were in were baptized and added to the church, 3,000 in all. The transformation that happened where Peter was timid and, man, I don't know if I could do that, Jesus. I can't, I can't preach. But the power of Jesus came on him and the Holy Spirit was anointed him and he was able to do some amazing and mighty things. How many know there's a crooked generation going on right now that we need to speak to and we need to be powerful in our words and not in our, oh man, that's, that's not my place. I don't, I don't have the authority. Man, Jesus has given us the authority to take that. And I'm a, I'm a visual guy. If Hunter wants to come out here, I have an illustration. If you're watching or listening online, you don't get to see it. But I'm an I'm a illustration kind of person. I'm a visual learner. I'm not a, a reader. I can't read very well. Spelling is difficult. I was homeschooled, so it's okay. Right? Fire, right? When we talk about the Holy Spirit was a fire. You got this thing. This is a, he's a you're trained fire. Okay, good. He said no. Explosions are spectacular, right? Fire is cool. Don't try this at home, kids, please. We have trained firemen right here. He's a fire extinguisher, if you're watching. But fire is, it can be really cool. Explosions can be really cool, right? If we throw a little bit of this liquid in here, just a little bit, and we light it on fire, it'll, it'll burn for a little bit. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well. We'll see. Whoops. We'll get this match to work. Oh. We'll see if this works or not. There, it's on fire. You can't really see the flame. It's too bright outside. But there's a fire in there, and it's burning. And you think about how gas works, right? The, the flame works. And how flames can, can go really big if you put a lot of gasoline in there, right? Or if you take a firecracker. I don't know if there's still a flame in there. See, we'll throw that in there. If you take a firecracker and it lights on fire, what will eventually will happen? It goes boom, an explosion happens, right? It, Explosions happen, and it's instantaneous. It's quick. You check the fire, make sure it's out. You can explode it. There you go. Good job. <laughs> Explosions happen, and it's really quick, and it's awesome, right? That's how the day of Pentecost was, and it was, it was an instantaneous it was an explosion, and it was a transformation. It was immediate transformation, but you take that same little gasoline, and you throw it in a, uh, an older Honda Civic, right? One that gets like 50 miles to the gallon, and a gallon of gasoline will take you a long ways. You know, you can take the Holy Spirit, and it can be a real quick transformation, or it could be a real slow burn. You put it in the right place, man, in the right context, the right vehicle, it can drive you a long distance. We rented a car this last weekend, and it got 19 miles to the gallon. It was bad, but I loved it. With our van, it gets almost 30. You know, you can drive a long ways or you get like a hybrid and, and you're using all these different technologies and you can go a long ways with just a little bit. You know, that's the power of the Pentecost. It, it exploded onto that scene. Thousands were affected. Thousands were saved. But also, he's, the Holy Spirit is working in our church. You know, it's a slow burn. It's that slow, man, God is taking us places if we allow him to fill us up. If we allow him to fill us up and use us if we're available, if we're the ones out there saying, God, use me, whatever it takes, whatever it is, through worship, fellowship, service, Christians are provided with that staying power through the power of the Holy Spirit. But what is in you? 
What's also taking up place in your lives? What's also taking up room for your lives? You can't go add some water to your fuel tank just to think, man, it's full now. It don't work. You'll get bad gas mileage if it'll work at all. If you put the wrong things in there, it's not going to work. The power of the Holy Spirit is not going to be able to do what it, what it needs to do through you. Or maybe you're that Peter and you're a little timid. And sometimes we all get that way a little bit. You know, when you're around friends or you've been friends with somebody for a long time and, and maybe they've seen how you acted before, right? Or maybe they kind of know your history a little bit. You're like, man, I can't really witness to them because they used to see me do this or that. I joke around with some of my st the students all the time and I, I tell them about different girlfriends that I used to have. And, like, <laughs> and it's kind of fun because... It, Man, you've done those things that are wrong, right? And so using those illustrations to, to lead somebody in the right direction. But maybe you're around somebody, you're like, man, I used to do this, and I can't really witness to them anymore because they saw me do that before. You know, I used to be, I worked at a, a restaurant. I used to do everything from cook to, to wash dishes and, and wait tables, and I also used to be a bartender there as well before I became a youth pastor. It paid better, but it was, you know. But as, that, as the, those things that were, you know, your past history, were like, man, I can't really go back to those people and witness to them because they, they saw what I used to do. Or they were in my, my different life. But having that trouble of going back. You know, sometimes you think about, man, there's no way I could get up in front of other people and talk. There's no way that I could lead a Sunday school class. There's no way that I could lead a small group. And there's no way I can do any of those things by myself. That's just not who I am. But I can tell you, that's where I was. I mean, I don't like, as I've said many times, <laughs> this isn't something that I enjoy is preaching in front of people. I don't enjoy it. But I know this is what God has called me to do. And he has given me the power to do it. Well, I would rather be sitting inside the air conditioning right now playing, you know, making sure the audio or sound sounds good or, or you know, doing something different. But that's not where God has called me. And I want to be where God has called me to be. When Peter when took that, that fire, he was like, man, our, our God, I can't really do that. Uh, no, he took that power and he ran with it. And God used him in a mighty way. And that's where this church, man, we need to see where God is placing us in the friends that we have, in the family that we have, in the communities that we're in, the places that we work. And God can use us in a mighty way if we let him. Sometimes you think about being a pastor is easy, right? You like you work one day a week. My wife would attest that's not true. And Roger's wife too. But you think, man, it would be nice if I, man, just go to church and not have to worry about anything, right? Have Sundays and the weekends off and go do other things. But that's not where God has called me to be. God has not called you just to sit on the sidelines and just be a person that comes to church. Now is not the time for us to just sit back and, and say, well, they're going to handle it, or somebody else might reach them. Man, God has called us to, to take the power of the Holy Spirit and use the gifts that he's given us. And to take out and stretch us out to where we, we think, man, man, I can't do that, but with God's help, I can. With God's help, with the power of the Holy Spirit, I can do anything. So what have you, or where have you been and where are you going? The Holy Spirit gives us that power to be a bold witness and also giving us the power to love everybody. And at a time when fighting about everything from who the president is to who the members of Congress are, who our governors are, or, uh, you know, the mayors, police, everybody's fighting about everything. Christ has called us out with the power of the Holy Spirit to do more. And God has not called us to stay on the sidelines to, to do more. We look back at uh, where we're going and where have you been and uh, we heard a message with our students. We had uh, Pastor Nathan Joris. Uh, he's the IMC Master's Commission pastor, and he, he uh, did an object lesson with us about monuments. And we look at where monuments and where have we been in life. And most of the time we look at monuments and we look back at history and uh, we see where, where things have been, right? You go to, you know, we had just had Memorial Day last Monday. And we remember where things were. And, you know, we see all these monuments in Washington, D.C. And, and he, here in Evansville, we see all the inscriptions and the names of, of people who've died and served. 
And we see all these monuments set up for different things. But we move forward from where we are choosing to do life differently because of those monuments. And one of the things about monuments is somebody had to, most of the time, somebody gave up something and died because of uh, something they did bravely. So we set up a monument to remember them. Something like a burial stone or a headstone. We see that all the time when, when somebody passed away. What's on their gravestone? We kind of get an idea of how they lived their life. But in Joshua chapter 4, they did something a little bit differently. They set up a, a memorial right after God did a miracle. I'm going to read that, Jordan, uh, uh, Joshua chapter 4. And they set up the memorial from crossing the Jordan. And so in uh, chapter 4, it says, When all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Now choose 12 men from each tribe. Uh, tell them to take 12 stones from every place where the priests were standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out and pile them up in the place where you will camp tonight. So Joshua called the, together the 12 men, and he had chosen one from each tribe. He told them, go to the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord your God, and each of you must pick up a stone and carry it to your shoulder uh, for the 12 tribes of Israel. And we will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? And when you tell them, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the ark of the Lord's covenant went across, and these stones will stand a memorial among the people of Israel forever. And that's where I want us to look at this afternoon, or this morning, is where have we been and where are we going? Even right now in our own lives, man, what would you write on your, your memorial? If you had a rock and you had to set it up, be like, what are you going to write on it? Saying, man, this is who I am and this is who God wants me to be. Man, I'm going to be who God wants me to be right now, not waiting until somebody else says, hey, you know, do this. Or not waiting until you die and saying, this is what they were, this is how they lived. But doing it right now. What's the memorial people are going to live or see you by in the next couple of months, in the next year? How do people want to see, how do you want people to see Christ through you? You know, think about that for the, the next year, and I want to have the worship team come back up and start playing a song that they've started playing this morning. And how do we want to be remembered? How does this church, how does our church family want to be remembered? As so a church that goes after the lost, the hurting, the people that need but I don't want to go back inside and just be the same old. I want that transformation. I want God to do some amazing things in our church in the next year. You know, we talked about 2020, the perfect vision, right? And you think about that for a second. We had, you know, Pastor Jeff, and we talked about the perfect vision. And we had all these things lined up that we thought we were going to do. And what happens? Somebody threw a firecracker and blew it all up. God transformed the way we do things. God is transforming the way we do things even today. We're not doing the things that we've done two, four years ago. We're doing things differently. And we got to adapt the way our cultures and our different things are moving out. God wants us to transform the way we're doing things. And we need to decide whether we're going to transform with Christ or whether we're going to go back to, man, I'm just going to go back inside and do things the way we used to do them. As we close, we're going to sing this song and I'm going to ask you to, to, to sing with us as we sing this song in closing and, and what the Spirit will fill you up and give you boldness to do mighty things. Not that we would be glorified, not that this church's name would be glorified, but that God's name would be glorified. That power to be used for his glory. And what are the areas in your life as we move forward, as we tr transition, you know, hopefully next week to be able to be back inside and, and to do church inside. But how do we as a church body do things differently? How is God going to transform you to do things differently? D.L. Moody said, I believe firmly that the monuments in our hearts are emptied of pride and selfishness and ambition, and everything that is contrary to God's law. The Holy Spirit will fill every corner of our hearts, but if we are full of pride and concept and ambition in the world, there is no room for the Spirit of God. We must be emptied before we can be filled. Man, what are we full of? Are we full of our own hearts and desires and our own ambitions or, oh, I got to do this or I got to do that? Are we full of Christ? Are we full of his Holy Spirit? 
We don't need to be inside, and we don't need somebody to, to be with you for you to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can do that wherever you are. They were in a room together. If you think about it, just imagine some four walls with a really big fan on right now. We're in a big room. Man, God can fill us wherever we are. God can, can anoint you wherever you are, whether you're listening online, whether you're sitting in your car, whether you're enjoying this beautiful weather. What are we full of this morning? Are you full of fear, doubt, hesitation? Or are you full of the Holy Spirit? Being bold in your faith. Bold in your faith. Peter was bold in his faith to do amazing things. We all go through the times of timid and hesitation. Man, God, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Are we doing things Christ asks us to do? And we're going to sing this song. And as you work, stand up and worship and just ask God, what can you do in your life to, to become more bold in it? And using the power of the Holy Spirit to do those amazing things.
as we leave to today, just ask the Lord what he can show you how to, to be more bold in your life. So we just thank you for this day. Lord, be with us this rest of the week, and guide us and direct us in everything that we do. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sunday night, 7 o'clock, or 6 o'clock, Pastor Roger's going to be live on Facebook, or Facebook Live with the video. And then Wednesdays at 7, and then next Sunday morning uh, at 10 a.m. inside the building. So we look forward to seeing you all there. God bless.